Get ready for some great music and great stories. Band in Seattle starts right now. Welcome to Band in Seattle, coming to you tonight from the Tractor Tavern. I'm Xander Denke, and with me is Aaron Roden, creator of the Air Raid podcast on CairoRadio.com, to talk about tonight's band, He Whose Ox is Gored. With an eclectic mix of prog, doom, psych, and metal, He Whose Ox is Gored creates a wall of sound that will engulf you with a sense of mystery that you will have trouble shaking off. Their full-length album, The Camel, The Light, The Child, that came out in 2015, was aptly described in New Noise magazine as, quote, a dense piece of music that defies categorization and places its creators at the forefront of forward-thinking heavy music. Absolutely. We'll be right back with He Whose Ox is Gored. Do I have to do it? I mean, it's... The uh, best way to describe it, it's like it's, it's how I can communicate with God. It's the only relationship with the unknown that I actually, you know, covet and keep. It's a, a group of like-minded individuals. musician and I don't know why you know that's just what I do that's the only way for me to meditate or for me to worship it's it's just that's that's the, that's what it is for me My name's John, I'm a drummer from He Who's Ox is Gord. I'm Michael Sparks Jr. I am the bass player for He Who's Ox is Gord. I'm Brian McClelland, I play guitar in He Who's Ox is Gord. I'm Lisa Mungo, and I am a vocalist and synth player in He Who's Ox is Gord. Drugs, booze, this, that, the next thing, you know, those, those things you know, you can get close. In my whole life, everything I've done, every job I've taken, every person I've met, every man I've loved, woman I've loved, I have never felt anything that feels like that level of, like, closeness and respect and joy as I have when I'm in that moment with those three other people. That was a really fun one because that was, I think, the first song where Lisa really stepped up and grabbed a hold of it. And she just took it and just delivered this performance, just belted out these lyrics. And that lyric, uh, I will bury you twice, always like stuck out as like, man, that's like got some real power to it. first moved to Seattle, my father actually worked at Guitar Center. Uh, Brian worked there and John, my drummer, both worked there. So, you know, three of the four members, we all worked there together. And then one day, I actually 
uh, tried to audition for vocals for a band called Hughes Oxus Gore, not realizing that was his project. And at one point he asked me, all right, hey, like I already got a vocalist, but what do you think about playing synth in this band? And I'm like, well, let me hear some demos. And I heard the demos and they were cool. But then he, I'm like, do you have anything weird? Do you have anything weirder than this? And he goes, well, I have these like little things I did, little quips. Like, he just showed me this weird random thing that he had, there was no vocals or anything. And that's what sold me. I heard something in those uh, little sessions that he did that had nothing to do with this. And I signed on because I was like, well that, if we can levitate towards that, if we can move towards that, there's something here. And it was, it was bizarre and it was off and it was moody and dark and, and uh, textural. And that's what got my attention. Static is so cool because it's such a bass-centric song. So often in heavy music, I feel like bass is so lost uh, amongst this crushing veil of guitars. To be able to kind of lead a song like that and have Brian's parts be more illusory and static and sort of uh, like landscaping. <laughs> Closest thing I think we'll ever get to a ballad. <laughs> Brian is the, you know, he's the, he's the riff master, he's the wizard, he's the cartographer. We sit down and he'll present, you know, something to begin a song with and, and it's always kind of like, okay, like, what? You know, like, it, it, it's completely outside of any musical sphere in which I've worked with him, which is constantly challenging and constantly rewarding. Like every time you're around him, you're just like, okay, I'm not doing enough. Like, and that is so important. I mean, to have someone who has pushed this hard, this long. For instance, band in Seattle. I was thinking, well, that's gonna be really tough going two tours in a row, not having any time off. His first reaction is, nope, we got it. We got this, we got it. This is what we're doing. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. This is what we're doing. Like, we're fine. Is it almost like a, um, a mechanism, you know, when he's playing his instrument, it's a mechanism for him to get this energy out or this thing, but then he also has the knowledge because he's always thinking about things. Understanding it is really bizarre. Yeah, when I hear it though, it's pretty magical. I don't know what the hell he's doing. <laughs> I think the first moment that made me want to play music was, I think I was six. My mom used to always play whatever the top 40 station was in Roswell, New Mexico, where I grew up. We didn't have a lot of a music scene there, but she would always play the radio. The Stones came on, and I said, what's that? And she was telling me about, oh, the Rolling Stones. I said, that's what I want to do. And I started, you know, the, the standard things. I played piano for a minute, and uh, uh, my mom got me uh, trumpet lessons. I was in the school band. And then shortly after, I picked up bass. Uh, I played bass uh, primarily for about 10 years. Uh, and then a couple years into it, I got an electric guitar and I started kind of teaching myself how to play. I'm left-handed. Um, and at the time, I couldn't, in Roswell, New Mexico, I couldn't find 
uh, very many left-handed instruments, so I ended up just playing right-handed instruments. So there's some dexterity things where being left-handed makes it easier to do some things, but like my right hand is a little uh, different, plays a little differently. I think that a big part of our style is like um, mathy, like time signature kind of stuff. And, and that does come from like a focus on and different rhythmic elements. Static is really fun. I loaded some synth drones from an app on my phone into this micro cassette and then just feed that into the pickups and that turned into its own texture. He Whose Ox is Gourd is, in my opinion, one of the hardest working bands in Seattle. Since their inception in 2009, the band has been consistently releasing new and interesting music, along with an extensive amount of touring. Their hard work and commitment to their art is evident in their live shows, which, uh, as we've seen tonight at the Tractor, is one heck of an experience. It is. We'll be right back with He Whose Ox is Gourd. Alpha. Brian and I both wrote totally different lyrics and didn't share what we were writing. So in that way, it was kind of cool and unique. I recorded the vocals on Camel Lion Child, but live, Lisa likes to do that middle section. She's great at it. She's phenomenal. It sinks in, it hits the listener really hard, and she also just looks forward and delivers the verse really well. I appreciate that. I love that. Working with Lisa is, she's one of the most interesting players I've ever played with, aside from her personality and the whole way she operates in the world. It's like she's like Pollock or something, doing the opposite of what I would expect. When we first started, she had a little tiny uh, micro Korg keyboard. It looks almost like a toy. And we were trying to find, you know, different synth sounds and kind of a little, just a little bit of texture to add to the music. Uh, sound guys often didn't know where to put her in the mix. So there's such a spectrum within what she does. I think it's really impressive to, all the time to see what she pulls out. She doesn't necessarily like the, the term, but I always say she's the icing on the cake. She's the, you know, the secret sauce for a lot of what we do. She's the one that's always elevating, always elevating, always playing above and pushing us farther. And that's just super exciting. It's so funny because I've known Lisa for so long, you know, she's got some sort of energy to her that people are drawn to and people feel safe and comfortable but then also look up to her at the same time. It's really special. She's always doing the, the counter movement so when everyone's playing in a minor she always comes in with that major and it's just like something beautiful over the top it's it's fantastic I used to hide, like I'd find the darkest corner of the stage and I would lie. I'd be like, hey, so it looks like all my gear's gonna fit over there. What do you guys think? And they were just like, what? You know, I was just lying. A lot of people just kind of kept saying, well, what if you're doing a lot of stuff? Have you ever thought about maybe like 
doing it in the center of the stage where we can see you in the light, not in the shadow. For someone with, like myself that is so afraid of that moment, especially that first moment when you're out on stage and you're making that first noise, uh, my heart is just beating out of my chest. And, um, and you're like, you just gotta bring it, you just gotta do it. Anyone who knows me who's been following us for a long time is, I used to do this, I used to hide. So I'd be like, you know, blah, 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 and the sins under my hood. And one day I just took it out and it kind of just, blah, it was massive. And then I, I, it just kind of felt like, I don't know, I feel like a Muppet up there. And that felt kind of good to just be ridiculous. It, it's all over the place. I swallow it a lot while I'm screaming. I, I, I've thought about cutting it and everyone, every time I even say that, everyone's like, no! So I think I'm just gonna let go. I think we're just gonna see where it takes us. You know, it has like kind of a one note riff. Dun, dun. It's, it's easy to interpret, but the thing is, I came to the table with this two note riff and the band turned it into a totally different song, which is what I love about playing with them. You know, they're, they're the kind of players that can take a two note song and turn it into a thing that you've never heard before. something industrial, something kind of percussively dominant, that sort of feeding into what we have been doing just kind of became unhinged and kind of a staple in our live performance as a result of that. been like a closer song ever since we wrote it pretty much it just sounds so cool in that spot I want to be a full-time musician um, through whatever avenue necessary that's that's for sure I quit my job and I took this really tiny room and it was just a matter of changing everything in my life to where that could actually be a reality. it work it's it, it's been a long time since that I've been doing it on a regular basis at this level that I've just kind of engineered my life to allow me to do it my parents are rich destroy everything and just like leap over a ledge, you know, and just like call it done, I'm done. Um, I don't know how I, it's getting worse, I'll tell you that. I'm trying, it's like, I've, I've seen it on video sometimes, I'm like, oh, maybe I should like reel it in a little bit, you know? Uh, Cause I don't have, I, and I work a, a normal job, you know, I don't, I don't have any money coming in from any crazy sources, so I gotta pay for my own gear. But um, 
I don't think about anything. I, again, I, I'm in that moment, and if, you know, a keyboard gets destroyed in the process, I'll figure it out. All right, that's it for tonight's Band in Seattle from the Tractor Tavern. If you want to hear more, check us out on bandinseattle.com where you can hear full concerts and find links for more information about our bands and where they're playing next. Aaron? And to stay up with the latest on the music scene and hear exclusive interviews with bands such as Pearl Jam, Jurassic 5, Death Cab for Cutie, and many, many more, check out the Air Raid podcast on kyraradio.com or on our website at air-raid.net. Check it out. Thanks for watching. Join us next week for more great music and great stories on Band in Seattle.